Tina here with Tina's Art Creations and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to get started uh, beginner um, acrylic pouring. Um, I'm going to do two different techniques. Um, I'm going to go over every, all the supplies that you need or things that you should um, have on hand. Um, you don't need all of them. Um, some of these are just suggestions but um, you know for the most part, um, some are just really basic and then you'll need them. So we have, well, I have two paintings here. So I generally don't really do too many um, just pours anymore. I've kind of advanced to other techniques. Um, but really quick, we'll go over what you need. So go get some canvases, level ones, packs at Michael's, $9.99. Sometimes you can get them for cheap. Um, Use your coupon, but don't get expensive canvases. The thin ones, um, they're still they're primed. They're great canvases. Just don't don't get the um, studio, the um, gallery wrapped ones. Um, start off slow. So get those. Um, next, you're going to need a pouring medium. Um, I use Floetrol, and I do have a video um, where I go over my pouring. Um, medium recipe and how I mix my paints so you can go back and watch that. I'm not going to go over that today um, so you can go back and watch that and then watch this one. So um, I use the hand flow trawl um, but you can use any pouring medium um, that you wish. You're going to need some water because that's with your pouring medium again that's in the other video. So you'll need water. Um, paper towels definitely. Go ahead and need paper towels inside you will need um, tape okay um, if you want this is optional you can, I tape the back of my canvases um, to keep them clean um, especially when I, when I for selling them but um, if you're just playing around and practicing you don't need to tape it so but if you want to you can tape the back so you just tape the backs all along the edges um, the other thing you're going to need are a couple different size cups. Cups to mix your paints in, depending on how much, how big of a canvas you're making. Um, cups to pour out of. Okay, so a diff couple different size cups. Paints. You can go with the tube paints. I use um, Artist Loft. I use Golden Acrylics. These are more expensive paints. They're level, they're um, more professional series paints, so you don't need as much. Um, again, the painting ratio and everything is in the other video, which I'll link below. I mean, you can obviously just go and see that. Um, you can use craft paints. Perfectly fine. Cheap. This is like Apple Barrel. I don't even know. Um, perfectly fine to start out using. Um, obviously, if you're going to get more into selling your art or doing it more professionally, you're going to want to use better quality paints. The pigments aren't as... Um, saturated gloves if if you want if not it doesn't really matter um you'll get your hands dirty you're going to be dirty obviously you get, my, you get dirty doing that um a torch not really needed um torches for heating up well actually not heating up but popping the air bubbles and bringing up cells um bringing up the bubbles to the surface you don't need it um you can use it you can use a lighter, just go real quickly. You can use your breath and just try to pop the bubbles. Silicone. This is if you want the cells. Um, I very rarely use this anymore. It's so dirty. Look at this. Um, I very rarely use this anymore. And if I do, it's if I'm going for a certain look. Um, but this is what causes the cell activation. Um, and last but not least, some stir sticks to stir your paints. Um, and then some more to pour in, or, or to pour in, yeah, something to prop up your canvas. So you can just do something like this. I have a setup here, but you can use something like this and then place your canvas right in it or on it, however, you can cover it over, do whatever you want, just so it's up. Um, you can put towels on the back. I don't do that, but you can put 
a little thumbtacks, the, the long ones and sit it on your table. Make sure your table or the area that you are pouring on is covered with plastic. I have an art room, so I don't have to worry too much about it. But um, when I first started doing this, I was pouring in my kitchen and I had paint everywhere. I still do. I still have little specks of blue and paint paints on the floor. But my wood floors, my husband's just thrilled. Um, the other thing that you can do, if you want, you can put wax paper down um, underneath your canvas. Or um, I use photo paper. And I collect the drippings from the pores because you waste a lot of paint. I collect the drippings and I make earrings and necklaces out of the drippings. Um, actually, I'm wearing a pair of Mrs. Beats to me. Um, this was one that I did. Um, so if you're interested in that, I'll make another video and I'll show you how I make the jewelry. Um, but you can put the paper down and so when you're pouring and the paint's coming off, you're collecting it, letting it dry completely and then it like peels off like a skin. I actually use the photo paper because it gives it a little bit more of a sturdier surface to um, bind to and to make the jewelry. Alright, so I am going to pause it for a second, get my stuff together, and we're going to come back and do two pours. I'm going to do two different techniques for you. One is going to be a dirty pour. Um, a dirty pour is either you're pouring it, you're putting it all the paints layered in one cup, pouring it on the canvas and moving it around. It can also be a flip cup where you're taking the canvas, you take the cup, you flip it over like this, and the paint comes out. That's going to be the one technique. Second technique I am going to do is a open cup pour. And that's a little different. It's where you put a upside down, cut the bottom out of a cup, and you put the cup down on a little bed of white and then you pour the colors in and it moves and i'm going to go over with you on that so i'm just going to pause it for a second and we will be right back all right i'm back and i have all my paints set up um i picked just a diff few different colors um to do uh the pours with today each color has a few drops of silicone. You only need a little bit. I used four drops in here, four drops in here, four, four, and four. That's it. And then you're going to give it a good stir. The more you stir, the more cells you'll get. So I don't tend to stir too much. Um, the less you stir, the bigger cells you'll get. Um, the more you stir, the smaller cells you'll get. I like bigger of that juicy ones. Okay, so... So the only um, color I do not have silicone in is my white, because this is my base. All right, I'm gonna put these aside and get my canvases ready. All right, I have all my supplies, I have my paper towels. All right. So I have two canvases here today. Um, I have an 8x10. Um, I didn't tape the backs today because I'll probably end up using these pours um, for jewelry. Um, I make some jewelry out of canvas, paints on canvas too. And then I have an 11 by 14 So, um, all right, so we can go ahead and get started here. All right, let's see. Um, All right, so we're, let's start on the little guy. All right, and we're gonna take our, we're gonna do the flip cup on this guy. So for a canvas this size, you probably need maybe about four ounces of paint. So that's this is well maybe like you know this is a I usually do like half the cup, and this is I think this is a sixteen ounce. So you're gonna almost eight ounces. That's kind of a lot for this canvas, so I'll probably do a little less, but we'll, we'll sh you'll see. All right, so we're gonna start with, so 
start, I always start with just a little white on the bottom of my cup. So I'm just going to pull it in there. And then I'm going to go in with my other colors. Now they're going to mix and I want them to mix. Okay. The dark blue, I'm going to go in with a little aqua. And then this little, this is a um, violet, light violet blue. I'm going to go in with that. And then I have this like darker panes gray. I'm just going to put that right in there. Okay. And then I'll top it off with my white. And that's, that's it. And that's kind of a lot of paint for this canvas because I'm not, <laughs> not really used to paint. Then you stick your little stick in there. And I just give it a little twip and pull it out. Okay. So we're going to do a flip cup. So what you want to do, take your canvas flip it over on top of the cup. Put your hand here and flip. That's it. Okay. And that's it. Let all the paint come down. Some people spray their cup with a spray silicone release. Um, so all the paint releases. I don't. I, I put the um, silicone in my paints when I'm doing a dirty cup or, or a flip cup. So we're just going to let that come out for a minute. Let it sit, be patient. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, that's probably enough. All right, so then you're going to decide what you want to do with it. You can just pull it off and let it go. You can pull it and go to the side. Um, you can pop a hole in it. You can punch a hole right here a couple times, and then it, the air is going to fill the cup and it's going to start to move. Um, why don't we do it like that today? So I have a tap here. And I'm going to go pop the hole in it. As you can see, it's starting to come out. Here we go. Isn't that neat? Look at that. So it's moving, so now I'm just going to release the cup. All right, like I said, that was kind of a lot of paint for this. Let's look at the inside of my cup. Can you see that? All right. So I'm just going to sit here for a minute. This is when I usually take my torch because there's going to be some bubbles, and I just pop some of the bubbles before I start to stretch it. Okay, really quickly. Again, you don't need a torch. So now I'm just going to move it. There's some areas that I don't like. I'm going to move it slowly to the one side because I want to cover the entire canvas. I don't, I'm not really like in this area here. So, all right, there we go. Pour that off. On the left side, just move it slowly. Go back to the center with the parts you do like. And make sure your sides are getting done. See what I mean about all the drip right here? I didn't put my paper down. I should have, but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't, I didn't look into my side. Okay. All right. So, so this is pretty good. So. Over here, I don't want to mess this up, so I'm going to leave this little section open. If you were doing the whole canvas, you would continue to move the pour over, but I make beach seams, and I kind of like what's going on in here, and I usually add my a beach in there. So for this one, I'm going to leave it as such, because I could, well, maybe not my office door, but what's the difference? It is a video, right? it back all right so you just want to make sure you got your sides and you just can dab the sides with your finger you can pick up some of the paint dab it just make sure you got your all your sides covered so that's pretty much it for that I kind of like the way this one looks all right so I'm gonna put that aside and go wipe my hands Now 
for the bigger canvas. We are going to do an open cut pour. So I just have this little, little Dixie cup and I got them at the dollar store and I'm going to cut the bottom out. Just pop it out just so it's open. Okay, you can use anything you want for this really. Just as long as it's like an open cup. All right, see? So my cup is open. So I'm going to put some white down on the canvas first. I'm gonna turn it this way. All right, so I'm gonna just put a puddle of white here. And then I'm gonna stick my cup in there. It doesn't really matter where you do it, put it on the canvas. Um, it's gonna move around, you're gonna move it around and you're gonna add more white. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in some blue. It's gonna start, hold on, it's gonna move yet. It's already started moving. <laughs> Put in some blue. I'm gonna do a little, maybe aqua. See, you see, see it moving? And let's put in a little purple this time. Ooh. And let's just wait and see what happens there. So it's starting to move. You see the colors coming out into the white. So I'm just gonna add a little of the Payne's gray. Oh, here we go. I'm moving around. And now I'm just gonna take the canvas and kinda move it out a little bit. Just move it around a little bit. So it will move, okay? See, there's a lot of color underneath the white here. All right, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit over here. And it's going to add some more color. Oh, there we go. That was the dark uh, navy little bit of the aqua and it's like floating on the top if you can see it and I'm just bringing it over I want it to start going in a different direction. Right. And I'm just going to add a little bit more. All right. I'm going to put a little bit more purple in. And here I'll use this darker uh, color. I didn't use it before. Might as well. Just put it on the back. All right. We got a lot of color on there. We got a lot of paint on there. Good. All right, so I'm going to move it around. Right, and then I can take my cup and I'm just going to twirl it like this and pull it up. So now we're going to stretch this baby out. Now this is, I want negative space in this painting. So I'm going to add a little white here, some more around. Let's work it with the white, okay? Because I don't, I like what's going on in there. I like the cells. Um, so I'm going to stretch it out. Side to side, get your edges, you'll, you'll get a all right. I'm gonna get them where I need to 
over with this box here. Let's go take that corner. That's, that's really all there is to it. Anybody could do this, any level. Um, you come out with some really cool and funky designs. Um, and then as you get better at it, you can try different techniques. There's so many out there. Um, there's different ways to mix your paints, um, things to mix your paints with, um, ways to put the paint on the canvas, um, blow dryers and swiping tools and uh, airbrushes, everything. You can do it with this. It, um, it, you know, there's just a lot of possibilities. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, so this is your beginner acrylic pouring. Um, you haven't, now this, oh, by the way, this is when you can torch it, but I really don't need to. I don't, I don't really want to, so I'm not going to. <laughs> There's not that many bubbles. Um, Cause if you do torch it and you like what you have here and you torch it, a lot of white's gonna come up and that's gonna ruin the look I have right here. And I really, it's really some really pretty colors in here right now. The purple and the blue and the aqua really mixed really nicely together. together. So you just have to play with it. Play with colors and um, see how they mix together. See how, see what other colors they make. Obviously, you know, the color wheel, red and um, the complementary colors on a color wheel, red and green, orange and blue. So you just have to like kind of play around a little bit. Um, I kind of just, you know, I go, I, I paint by sense. I, I like these colors together. I think they're going to look good together and they usually do. Um, been a few times where I scrape it. So if you get something like this and you don't like it, because I have a little corner here that I didn't get, so I'm going to get that with the rest of my white here. I'll just push it. Um, if there is a painting you do and you don't like it, you can just scrape it. Just scrape it off. And you, I mean, you waste a lot of paint again, but um, uh, if you don't like it, what are you going to do with it? Um, you can pour over them. You can. You just have to make sure you don't have to clean your canvas um, with Dawn dish soap um, really well because the silicone will come through, um, especially if you're going to use the canvas for something else. If you're going to varnish this afterwards, again, you're going to have to clean your canvas with Dawn dish soap. Scrub it, scrub, scrub. Dry it completely and then varnish with whatever varnish you want to use um, or resin. I do a lot of resin work. All right, so um, that's about it, and um, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please comment below. Um, I will try to answer you the best I can, and um, trying to grow my YouTube channel, so please like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. It helped me out a lot, trying to get, um, you know, my art out there. Um, I've learned a lot from YouTube. I'm trying to give back a little bit what I've learned to other people. Um, I'm... I've been an artist my whole life, but the acrylic pouring, I started about two years ago now to incorporate it into the art that I've already been doing. And um, I've been really successful with it. I make lots of mixed media art. Um, you can check out some of my other videos. I have one on the beach scene that I do with the, the beach and sand and shells and all that. I have a surfboard that I did on one of my um, videos um, with resin. So there's all kinds of stuff we can do on this channel together and I'm looking forward to doing it with you. All right. So have a good one and um, see you soon. Bye-bye. Okay, I'm back. Just really quick, want to show you what I did. So I had all this leftover paint, all these drippings that I didn't want to waste because it's like it, it makes me itch. Um, so I made, I had all these little baby canvases and I just made dips. Um, so this is something you can do. So you just take a little canvas, dip it over, stick it in the paint, peel it up. And you got this really cool little piece of art. Um, go in and then I'll get my sides, but I can't do that with one hand. And then I put some down over here. There we go. And that's it. And these come out really cute. And you can make little ornaments out of them. Um, 
you know, Christmas ornaments, um, or just, um, the, oh, sorry, these came with little stands, um, so they could just be a little piece of art on their own. All right, and I think these are three by three, four by three, or two by two, I don't know. They're just little baby canvases, and I made a whole bunch of them, and I will have a little 